Hello and welcome to our presentation. I'm Steve Funk, Director of Farm Income Programs for MNP. And this presentation is about the Ag Risk Management Projector. It's a new approach for farm insurance risk management that we've developed as a firm. This is the agenda for the next half hour or so. We're going to start talking about the current situation in terms of farm insurance risk management programs. Uh, we'll talk about uh, a brief overview of the three types of insurance currently available, uh, give you a brief intro to the Ag Risk Management Projector, a live demo where we actually show you what it can do using uh, some actual farm data, and uh, then we'll talk about the benefits and costs and some concluding remarks. The current situation then, uh, what are producers thinking about when they think of farm insurance risk management? Well, there's a number of things that go through their minds, not only the programs themselves, uh, crop insurance, agri-stability and GARS, uh, but many things that are outside of their control, interest rates, weather, uh, markets, etc. And there are three significant trends in the marketplace that have led to a lot of questions from producers about which insurance programs to include in their risk management strategy. We've seen a dramatic increase in those types of questions over the last number of years. So the three trends that contributed to that are number one, evolution of crop insurance to include new types of coverage. For example, whole farm coverage, in some cases limited price coverage depending on province. Uh, secondly, there's availability of private sector risk management tools. And, and so as part of the Growing Forward 2 initiative, the government actually has some funding out there for private enterprises to develop similar tools. Uh, but even prior to Growing Forward 2, there was one in particular that, that came into the marketplace. Uh, it's called GARS or Global Ag Risk Solutions. That's the one that we're going to compare today. Uh, thirdly, there were some significant changes in 2013 to 2017 agri-stability program parameters. Uh, most people are familiar with uh, the drop in income that had to occur in order to generate benefits. It used to be 15%, now it's 30%. And then they did something called um, reference margin limiting, uh, which limits the reference margin to the lesser of the reference margin that was otherwise calculated same rules as always, uh, or the allowable expenses uh, in that reference margin. And so those changes uh, are a little confusing to uh, interpret uh, and in particular to apply to a specific farm operation. Um, hence why, why we get so many questions about that. Now while we're on the topic of private sector insurance, I wanted to put in a little plug for why private sector insurance may never be an adequate replacement for crop insurance and agri-stability. And one of the keys here is that in the insurance world, replacement usually means with something at least as good. And uh, I'm not sure that the private sector insurance is going to be at least as good uh, because it's not government subsidized. Uh, so this is why private sector insurance, when it comes out, always looks quite substantially different from the existing government programs. The parameters and triggers are, are mark, markedly different uh, in order to not encourage direct comparison with those government programs. Private sector insurance, of course, is not government subsidized, so if you stacked the, the two up side by side and they did have the same parameters and triggers, uh, it would be clear who the loser is because the private sector insurance would be a higher cost for a lower benefit. Uh, and so these programs need to be designed to be significantly different than the current government programs and that's to mask the, the cost benefit type of comparison. So the conclusion on this is uh, I guess be careful what you ask for. Private sector insurance may be good for the insurance industry but is it really good for farming? 
So continuing on with a brief overview of the three types of risk management programs currently available to the farm. Uh, so we've got crop insurance, global ag risk solutions or GARS, and agri-stability listed on the top there. In terms of coverage type, crop insurance is individual crop only. Uh, so normally if somebody insures uh, uh, one type of crop, they have to insure all their acres of that type of crop uh, and they could choose to insure multiple crops on their farm. Uh, GARS is insurance for the whole crop farm. So GARS does not provide coverage for cattle or other types of, of livestock or, or productive capacity uh, just for crop growing. And agri-stability on the other hand is one that applies to the whole farm. So any type of productive capacity uh, that relates to the farm. All three types of programs cover yield loss. Uh, price loss though is generally only covered by GARS and AgriStability. Uh, depending on province there may be some limited price coverage uh, for crop insurance too. Increased input costs in terms of seed, fertilizer and chemical, those are covered by GARS and AgriStability, uh, not by crop insurance. And fuel and labor costs, there's, there's a few other agri-stability allowable costs too that would be included in that category. They are covered by agri-stability but not by GARS or crop insurance. Relative timing of cash flow, uh, going from left to right we go from quickest to slowest. So crop insurance immediately after the loss is known and claim is filed. Uh, GARS would be 60% after harvest, 40% after May 1st of the subsequent year. And agri-stability could be one year or more, although some of the provinces are getting a little quicker with processing these claims. In terms of relative program price, crop insurance varies between $0.50 cents and $20 an acre. Uh, GARS, by far the most expensive, between uh, 6 and $20 an acre and agri-stability by far the cheapest at 50 cents to two dollars an acre. I want to touch a little bit on global ag risk solutions just because it would be uh, maybe the one that people are least familiar with. Global ag risk solutions is a private for-profit insurance company. It is a multi-parallel insurance product so uh, it covers on, on the revenue side, it covers yield loss and price loss uh, for the commodities that you sell, the crops. And on the cost side, it covers the price and the quantity of the direct input costs only. So specifically that seed, fertilizer and chemical that you see there on the slide. Now GARS coverage is based on a gross margin. And so when this slide was created, the producer could obtain coverage for up to $150 of gross margin. Uh, now that coverage has, has been extended. It all depends on the type of farm. So if it's a type of farm that uh, is, is very profitable and has a history of generating um, high gross margins when you compare crop sales, less seed, fertilizer and chemical, GARS may be willing to insure for more than $150 of gross margin. So revenues equals the cost of the inputs plus $150. Um, if you're insuring for $150 of, of gross margin. You can insure for various levels of gross margin uh, starting at zero. So that would be where revenues equal the cost of inputs and it jumps up in in uh, increments of $25. Claims occur whenever the producer drops below their margin coverage level. So whatever they choose, if it's a $75 gross margin, uh, GAR, the GARS program will work out that gross margin based on their actual uh, financial statement results and uh, the claim will occur if they drop below that margin. Revenues from sale of their crops less the costs. This is a sample quote from GARS and so you can see that this producer 
has been quoted for coverage of $100, $75, $50, and $25. Down here, this, this basic one is the zero uh, gross margin. And of course, the costs go up, $6 for insuring the zero gross margin, up to $16.50 for the $100. Now, this would vary by producer. It all depends on the perceived risk when, when GARS reviews the situation. In the brackets here, we have a number of 188.43, and this is basically the three-year average of uh, these direct inputs, seed, chemical, and fertilizer, based on the person's financial statements, plus 40%. And all that number means is that if the producer uh, wants to apply more than that, they need to go to the insurance company and get permission. Uh, in terms of calculating the gross margin, this number doesn't really mean anything. It's just an average of previous years. The gross margin will be calculated based on the current year results. So the actual seed, fertilizer, and chemical, and, and the revenue minus the, that seed, fertilizer, and chemical. And when we talk about risk management programs for, for farms, we also have some overall considerations. So besides thinking about how the various programs would work, the crop insurance, the agri-stability, the GARS, we also need to consider what's the strength of the producer's balance sheet. Is there some form of insurance required by the bank? If so, you know, it would be um, uh, advisable to get that insurance. And what's the cash flow? If cash flow is the main consideration, if that's the most important one, uh, well then we would have to gravitate towards crop insurance because that has the quickest cash flow. So just by way of a brief introduction here, our Ag Risk Management Projector takes data from a producer's own operation in terms of acres, production costs, expenses, yields, prices, uh, and the combination of insurance products. So Agri Stability, they may or may not have a GARS quote, they may or may not have a crop insurance quote. Uh, whatever they've been quoted on, uh, we can combine that with data from their own operation and provide them with uh, pictures to assist them in determining which risk management programs they should include in their strategy for the upcoming year. There's basically four ways that it can be used. So the most common is this forward thinking type of strategy. So prior to seeding for a given year, the producer will come to us and will use their data plus their quotes from the insurance programs or their history from agri-stability to determine or give assistance in determining which programs should be part of the insurance risk management strategy for that year. Another use of this agri-risk management projector is to determine specifically whether the producer should stay in agri-stability. And there we can be forward thinking or we can be historical. We can actually use the previous year's agri-stability application and financial statements to simply do some modeling and show whether it would be beneficial to stay in agri-stability based on that year's results. Uh, thirdly there, we can evaluate potential results given a set of circumstances. Uh, this is a current approach. So for example, in the fall, uh, this fall of 2015, uh, being that there was a drought in Western Canada, a lot of producers were having trouble sleeping at night, uh, knowing that they had incurred a, a crop disaster and maybe not being sure whether these programs were going to cover them. Uh, we can use data from the producer's operation. Uh, they, if they have an estimate of what their harvest is going to be, we can use that uh, along with historical financial information and uh, estimate which programs uh, would potentially help them out in a situation like that. So this is, this is a function that just helps the producer sleep at night. And then fourthly, uh, a bigger picture issue is determining whether programming objectives, and here I'm talking specifically 
uh, about AgriStability being that that was the program that changed significantly, whether program objectives are being met. And so there's a number of organizations uh, across Canada, um, farming associations, that want to lobby the government on changes to these programs and have some input uh, not only into Growing Forward 3, but uh, potentially into the rest of Growing Forward 2. The Ag Risk Management Projector uh, can actually be used as a, a great tool to demonstrate to those producer groups as well as to the politicians and government administrations whether programming objectives are being met. And as a firm, we've, we've certainly done that, uh, done some of that already uh, with the Canadian Federation of Agriculture and um, with representatives, representatives from their various provincial bodies. We're now going to get into a live demo of the Ag Risk Management Projector. And uh, this situation is, is based on an actual uh, situation using actual farm data. Uh, we've disguised the name and, and some of the uh, information uh, to, to maintain confidentiality. It's a 2,600 seeded acre farm with four different crops. Uh, there's 60 cows, hence the name 6T Land and Cattle Limited. A strong balance sheet with good liquidity has been in crop insurance every year except 1989. That was a year where they had an extreme wreck and it turned out to be a very big and expensive mistake not to be in crop insurance. And so this farmer um, insists on crop insurance each year uh, because of that, uh, because that was such a bad experience. The question is, is the crop insurance necessary or is 80% crop insurance necessary, is 70% necessary, what would be a good level of crop insurance to take. The agri-stability reference margin has also been limited here. So I talked before about the agri-stability program changes, in particular the reference margin limiting. Uh, this producer here was limited by $32 an acre. Uh, and so prior to limiting, they were about $200. And uh, after the limiting, $168. So we call this low to moderate limiting. I'll be able to show you the impact of that when we get into the modeling. And they're five years away from retirement and transitioning of the farm, which means that uh, probably not a time to take some extreme risks in terms of backing off on their insurance and, and wanting to maybe self-insure. Uh, probably want to manage the risks and make sure that there's something there for the next generation. So this is the Ag Risk Management Projector and prior to getting into the demo I need to explain to you uh, what you're looking at here. Uh, if possible, ignore what, uh, what's represented down here by these different colors. I'm just going to explain what the graph means and uh, then as I toggle through some different options you'll easily understand uh, what's happening. So the producer has given us information in terms of what crops they're growing. So you can see there's four crops here, the breakdown of acres. Uh, they've given us some estimated yields and they've given us some estimated prices for the year. And then also, uh, going above and beyond that, they've looked at input costs, so specifically seed, fertilizer, chemical. In this case, there is no hail insurance, but we could, we could put some hail insurance in there. So they've estimated these costs per acre and, and given that information to us. They've also estimated their livestock margin. And so this is in total dollars here, uh, the production value of the cattle would be 65550 and then some feed and vet expenses. So total dollars for the livestock per acre for the crop. So if we go back here, based on the information the producer gave us, this 100% bar represents their original plan. So if we cost out everything that they gave us, a uh, number of acres, times estimated yields, times estimated prices, 
plus the production value of the cattle averaged over the acres, uh, this is what it works out to per acre. So $421.87, that says, per acre is their revenue based on their plan. Now in behind the revenue here, we have two types of expenses. We've got the agri-stability allowable expenses at $195.50 per acre. And we've got the agri-stability non-allowable expenses at $136.80 per acre. Now I showed you before where the client gave us some seed, fertilizer, and chemical costs. We've gone to his financial statements, his historical financial statements, and estimated the rest of the costs and, and done that per acre. So we looked at a five-year average. We looked at whether current results were more representative of what was going to happen in, in the current year. Uh, because we're doing this prior to seeding, remember. Uh, this is for 2015. And uh, the producer would generally come to us prior to seeding and uh, provide us with a plan, which we can then do some modeling with. So here we've tried to estimate the allowable and non-allowable costs. So we're trying to model a complete income statement here on a per acre basis. And you can see that based on the plan, it is a pretty good plan because there's a significant difference here between the planned revenue and the planned expense. We then take that revenue based on the plan and drop it in 10% increments to 90, 80, all the way down to zero. And you'll see that there's still a little bit of revenue at zero here because we're dropping the crop production only. Uh, the cattle production is remaining constant. Uh, again, I said it was averaged over the acres, so that component there is also in these other bars going all the way across. So as we drop the production in 10% increments, uh, we see losses, which are represented by the red here. We've got $29.43 per acre uh, at the 70% level there, and, and it goes down from there. So those are losses that would be incurred if the producer's actual results were off of his original estimate, off by 30%, 40%, 50%, etc., going on down. And when you work this out per acre, remember we said this was a 2,600 acre farm, uh, even a loss of 29.43 per acre can be pretty significant in, in dollar terms. Now down here, uh, we have a financial summary which summarizes uh, going back to total dollars. So what is the production worth in total dollars if the producer achieves his plan? It's 1.096 million. Uh, then we split out the production expenses, the remainder of allowable expenses, non-allowable expenses to get net earnings of 232,000. So that's in total dollars. Um, and here it is in acres. So the net earnings is 89.56 per acre uh, at this level here if the producer achieves their plan. Now what we want to start doing is we want to start adding in different insurance products and seeing how these insurance products will help to manage these expected losses here that might occur. Right now we're modeling a production loss and that's very important to remember. I'll show you the difference between a production loss and a price loss in a minute. Now if we add in agri-stability you can see that agri-stability fills in some of those losses. And so if you have a production loss, the question is, how much of a production loss do you expect? A production loss that would take production down to zero is highly unlikely. Uh, but what is likely? Is, is something in this range likely? What was your worst year like? Those are the kinds of questions that producers have to ask. Now the other important thing to note is that as we add these insurance products, 
it also adds the premiums for them into the costs. And when we talk about agri-stability, we're talking about the fee that's paid to the government as well as the fee that would be paid to us to actually do the application. So we're adding those things into the costs. It's, it's barely perceptible. You can see, I think, that the, um, the cost bar is moving a little bit. But the reason it's barely perceptible is because agri-stability is the cheapest program on the market. And you can see that even in the case of low to moderate, moderate sorry, limiting, um, that agri-stability is covering, providing some good coverage on those losses. Now let's compare that to a crop insurance scenario. And we just have to go down here for a second. And it looks like this, this fellow has um, an insurance quote for 50, 70, or 80% coverage level. So we can compare to crop insurance at 70%. Now it looks like crop insurance is providing better coverage than agri-stability in this scenario. And remember, we're trying to model a whole farm loss here. So we're modeling what if total production goes down by 10%, 20%, 30%, et cetera. Uh, we can also model individual crop losses, but that would require going into the actual data that the producer provided us with and changing data just based on one crop. So if we stack up agri-stability with crop insurance at 70% in this case, it looks like crop insurance is filling in more of the losses. But remember, we were talking about a production loss. What happens if we click on this and turn it into a price loss? Well, in, in this particular province, crop insurance doesn't cover price losses at all, whereas agri-stability does. And so um, agri-stability here is represented not only by the pink, but also by the purple in terms of some negative margin coverage. That negative margin coverage wasn't available in the case of a production loss because the producer wasn't in crop insurance. And so when they're not in crop insurance, crop insurance gets imputed at the level of 70%. In this case, the negative margin coverage disappeared. Okay, so you can see that crop insurance at 70% is providing uh, a better level of coverage for a production loss but not for a price loss. Now the other thing to note is that the cost of the crop insurance at 70% is higher than the cost of agri-stability. And we have this summarized over here. So the total cost of agri-stability for this producer was $2,892, whereas the cost of the crop insurance at 70% is 14,518. 14,518 is, is added into these costs and averaged over the number of acres. So that is why the costs in this scenario are higher than the costs in that scenario. So not only are the costs higher, um, it, it's going to result in a little bit less profitability uh, in these three scenarios here if the crop insurance is taken. Now just going down here again for a minute, this producer has a GARS quote for um, up to $100 worth of gross margin. So what happens if we combine agri-stability with GARS at $100? So that, uh, that looks like it provides better coverage than with agri-stability alone certainly, especially at the bottom, but again, it's a matter of how likely is it uh, to incur this type of loss. And when we look at the likely range of losses, it's looking like crop insurance in this case um, covers in more of the loss than, uh, than GARS does. In fact, you, you can see a significant difference here uh, before with agri-stability and crop insurance it was barely perceptible but here you can see that uh, the costs are definitely higher with GARS in there 
and uh, that's what's contributing to the loss here at the 80% level that uh, doesn't occur over here. And indeed, if we go and compare the costs, now the cost of the option on the left is 45792 compared to 14518 but again, we need to compare price losses as well as production losses. And so if we, if we look at the price loss, uh, certainly this scenario here does provide better coverage than that one. How about if we compare agri stability with GARS? So there it is at a price loss. Here it is at a production loss. Notice that GARS doesn't change. But again, the producer is, is going to have to gauge what is the likely area that they may end up in if they have a whole farm loss. Is it this area here in the middle of the graph or is it this area down here? Certainly if it's the area here, uh, AgriStability alone is providing better coverage than GARS in this case. It's not the case in, in all cases. Every farm is unique and uh, every, uh, every farm needs to be looked at individually in order to arrive at conclusions uh, on which insurance programs are beneficial for that farm for that year. Uh, and that's another important point is that um, Things change each year. The prices in the marketplace change. Uh, the crop insurance history changes. The agri-stability reference margin changes. There are so many factors that change that um, it's not possible to conclude based on doing this for one year that that strategy should be used for the next five years. Each year is unique. Each farming operation is unique. And so this is something that we recommend the producers um, uh, would do on an annual basis for their farm. Now we have a couple other uh, or a few other things here to, um, to play around with. Uh, one of which is the presentation. So right now it's on agri-stability presentation. It shows agri-stability allowable costs in yellow, non-allowable in brown. We can change that to a financial statement mode, which if we do your financial statements, uh, it will equate the cost to be consistent with the approach we use in, in calculating your gross margin on the financial statements. Uh, over here, this use here, or, or this, this box here, allows us to toggle between uh, conventional, limited, and, and automatic agri-stability margin. And so this is all about the reference margin limiting. If you keep it on auto, it takes the lesser of the limited margin and the conventional margin. If we choose conventional in this case, because this client has been limited, remember that they were uh, $200 per acre agri-stability reference margin before limiting and 168 after. So look what this does to the agri-stability coverage. So they had better coverage before the program rule changes. Uh, but if we were using this as an example for a government lobby, uh, we would want to show that um, even before rule changes, agri-stability was not paying into profitability. Uh, that was one of the key reasons why that expense margin limiting was put into place is that the government felt that agri-stability was paying into profitability in certain cases. Uh, in this case here, it was not. Um, but again, this is for this individual farm for this year. So it's not paying into profitability before, and it's not paying after the rule changes either. So very useful in terms of explaining this to producer groups as well as to uh, the government. Now the other thing that we can play around with here is we can play around with price sensitivity, yield sensitivity, input sensitivity, even unseatable acres, and uh, we can use production and or change the production and input sensitivity on the livestock. In this case, there's only cattle. Um, 
we can add two other types of, of livestock production productive capacity there too or if you have more than three we can combine them and um, and do it that way but uh, you know here we can look at options such as uh, if the producer sees the original graph and says well hey I was a little conservative on my prices I think the prices are actually going to be 10 percent higher then we put 110 percent in here and um, see how the graphs will change play around with the different program options and and assist the producer in, in choosing a, a good set of uh, insurance risk management uh, tools for their farm for that year. So I'll just change that back to 100%. Uh, we can also play around with the yields. If the producer says, well, my yields were um, optimistic yields, I think they might be 10% lower, so we can put the yields down 10%. And that's what it does to, to the graph here. And so something to watch closely, uh, let's put this at 85% for the yields. Something to watch very closely is when we do this modeling, uh, we look at these graphs and, and we see, okay, if the producer achieves their plan, there is some profit there. However, if they're only 10% off their plan, there is a loss kicking in already. And this is a case where uh, some of our farm management consultants may be able to help. Uh, this is indicative of the fact that uh, the plan might not be a solid one. And so what changes could be made to, to the plan for that year or to the farm for that matter, which would ensure better profitability going forward. Okay, we're just going to go back to the presentation. Now the benefits of using the ARMP. So there's, there's four ways that the ARMP or Ag Risk Management Projector can provide benefits. And these four ways correspond to the four different uses. So if we're choosing a farm insurance risk management strategy, uh, which is again the forward thinking use. It's where the producer comes to us prior to seeding and we assist them in, in choosing a farm insurance risk management strategy. The question is how much do producers spend on this on an annual basis and is it money well spent? So we could have a situation where the producer um, like in the other example, felt that they had to have crop insurance at a certain level because of a disaster that they had back in 1989. Is that money well spent? Because crop insurance is relatively expensive. Uh, it's hard to tell unless you have some way of picturing it, uh, which the Ag Risk Management Projector provides. And then the other benefit is, is the annual plan sound? So that was the last example that I showed there is if we see a graph where the producer is making profit based on their plan, but if they're even 10% off, the, the plan isn't sound anymore, there's going to be a loss incurred already. Um, we can provide some benefit that way in identifying those situations early and uh, applying some corrective action. So second way that the risk management projector provides benefits is determining whether to stay in agri-stability. And, and so again, this can be um, uh, part of a forward-thinking strategy if we're looking at it for the coming year, or we can use historical data. We can use last year's agri-stability return, uh, last year's financial statements to work this out. Um, that may be a little cheaper for those that are they're skeptical about the program. But often what we're seeing in this in this case is we have clients that come to us and say, agri-stability doesn't work anymore. The new program rules have made it such that it doesn't work for my farm. And when we actually use their farm data and enter it into the risk management projector, uh, we can see that they would be actually be forfeiting a lot of benefits if they were to drop the program, a lot of potential benefits. And so um, in, in many cases, th this is what's happening. In some cases, yes, it isn't beneficial to stay in anymore, uh, but we're finding more often than not that people are insisting the program's not beneficial. We run the risk management projector 
and it shows that in a reasonable range of losses, yes, it still does provide significant benefits. Thirdly, we can um, evaluate the potential results given a set of circumstances. So again, that's the, the drought that was experienced in, in Western Canada this year is, is a prime example of that. And um, you know, right prior to or, or subsequent to harvest, uh, we could come in with the risk management projector and estimate uh, whether these programs were going to kick in given the current circumstances. So the benefit is what is your expected cash flow and um, will knowing that help you sleep at night? And then fourthly, um, the benefits can relate to determining whether programming objectives are being met, um, which is a big picture government program policy uh, lobby issue. And so is there a better way to engage politicians and, and administrators and even producer groups in robust dialogue around program changes? Is there a better way to do that than showing them a picture of how the program works, how it works before the rule changes and how it works after? Uh, we found it to be very effective uh, and we have done presentations, as I said before, for the Canadian Federation of Agriculture and for representatives from their provincial bodies, as well as for Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and some of the um, provincial administrations for agri-stability. And they're all very impressed with uh, the information that this tool shows. So we've talked about the benefits. What about the costs? Um, and this is very important is, is rather than looking at the, the actual cost structure there, remember that costs are negotiable. So we want to make sure the cost structure makes sense for your farm. We have designed a cost structure that uh, in part here, apart from a base fee of $1,100 to $1,500 for farms up to 2,000 acres, uh, apart from that, it applies um, a per acre amount. So for acres between 2,000 and 5,000, uh, it's 25 cents an acre only for the acres that are over the 2,000. So we're not double billing for the portion that was under 2,000 acres. And then for acres that are over 5,000, 12 and a half cents per acre. And so we did this on a per acre basis just because the data in the ag risk management projector is on a per acre basis. So we just wanted to be consistent with that. Um, however, uh, costs are negotiable. We want to make sure the cost structure makes sense for your farm. Uh, we've run this, um, this type of cost calculation for a number of farms and in some cases it, it does result in an inequity which we, we can then um, uh, provide you with a quote that's, um, that's more based on a base fee and, and maybe more reasonable for your farm. Uh, the other thing that we need to add there sometimes is a surcharge for complex livestock margins that need to be factored in. Um, for uh, That's for a minimum of $350. Uh, and that, uh, that wouldn't apply to the example that I just showed you with 60 cattle. Uh, that margin was very easy to factor in. Uh, if somebody had a significant livestock um, operation and maybe multiple types of livestock, that would be where we would need to add the surcharge of $350. So in conclusion, if, if this is something that um, has piqued your interest, uh, if you could see yourself using this, you know, either looking at the upcoming year and what uh, types of risk management products to include in your in your risk management strategy. Um, if you could see using it to evaluate current results, using it to determine whether you want to stay in agri-stability or not, or using it in, in government lobby efforts or to help educate your, uh, your local producer group, uh, let us know. Uh, here's my contact information. If you have any further questions, uh, you can contact me um, on my cell phone directly at my office or, or by way of email and be sure and connect with me on, on LinkedIn uh, as we're posting some updates there from time to time as well. Uh, so thanks everyone.